Shalom and welcome back to the channel. I'm Code Searcher and this is the end of the curse. You may say, what curse is that? <clears throat> Folks, uh, you may not be aware, but there was a curse uh, put on the northern tribe, Israel, um, that's been 2,730 years that has recently in the past few years come to an end uh, so that is where this access term comes from now beloved I really really hope that you stick in hang in there and watch this teaching because it's going to bless you if you don't know who you are uh, and some of you think you know who you are and some of you don't know who you are but you will know when um, this video is complete. Now, I want to bring to mention a term that Christians know about, which is uh, the fullness of the Gentiles. The fullness of the Gentiles comes from Romans. This is from Paul. Uh, and I want you to see this, guys. Because we're talking about an engrafting. And you've heard me talk about this before on my channel. The grafting in. The cutting off of branches. The grafting in of branches. Uh, Zechariah 4. Which is the two witnesses. The, uh, the mystery there. And this is so full of mysteries. But this is a beautiful thing here. Okay. Elohim is grafting in. The Gentiles. Uh, Yeshua came to fulfill the feast. At the time, some believed that he came to um, bring in the kingdom, and that wasn't the case. He also needed to graft in the Gentiles, the nations, the goyim, back into um, back into the fold. Okay, so we're here. We are, and I want to start in Romans 11, and uh, let's start. Hang in there, guys. This, you're going to love this. And you're going to know who, who we're talking about here, okay? And if there falls riches for the world and their failure riches for the Gentiles, how much more their completeness? For I speak to you, the Gentiles, inasmuch as I am an emissary to the Gentiles, I esteem my service. For somehow I might provoke to jealousy those who are my flesh to save some of them. This is what Zev Porat has taught me about provoking the Jews to jealousy. This is exactly what it is right here. All right. For if their casting away is the restoration to favor of the world, what is the acceptance but life from the dead? Now if the first fruits is set apart, the lump is also. And if the root is set apart, so are the branches. And if some of the branches were broken off, and you, being of a wild olive, have been grafted in among them, and came to share the root of fatness of the olive tree, do not boast against the branches. And if you boast, remember, you do not bear the root, but the root bears you. You shall say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. Good. By unbelief, they were broken off. And you stand by belief. <clears throat> Folks, they missed their first visitation. And we're talking about the, a population, a small percentage of the Jews. There were some that did receive. There were many. There were many. You know, you know in, in uh, Acts, there was over 3,000 saved in a day. So there were many Jews coming. But some rejected. Some of the... Um, some of the Pharisees. And, and when I say Jews, folks, you must understand, Jews are Judah, not all of the tribes. You have Judah and you have Israel. Israel can, is comprised of 10 other tribes. Um, when you hear of Ephraim, Ephraim is Israel. Israel is Ephraim. And when you hear Ephraim or Israel, it is always talking about those ten tribes. Um, there was a point 
after Solomon, <clears throat> where Yahuwah you know, split the kingdom in two. Okay, uh, then there came a time, and we're going to get to that in um, one of the scriptures here. Uh, but I wanted to touch down on who, or, or the term Gentiles, who the the fullness of the Gentiles is, because I got that as an access term in one of the codes. But um, I want you to get in your mind the grafting in. Yahuwah does this throughout the, the Bible, and I've, I've shown this over and over again, where he, he t cuts out and he grafts in. Um, but let me, just, let me just keep on going here. All right. For if Elohim did, for if Elohim did not spare the natural branches, he may not spare you either. See then the kindness and the sharpness of Elohim on those who fell sharpness, but toward you kindness. And if you continue in, in his kindness, otherwise you shall be cut off. And they also, if they do not continue in unbelief, shall be grafted in. For Elohim is able to graft them in again. For, you, for if you are able to cut out the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted in contrary to nature, into a good olive tree, see how much more these who are the natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree. For I do not wish that you should be ignorant of this secret, brothers. Hear this now. Lest you should be wise in your own estimation, that hardening in part has come over Yisrael until the fullness of the Gentiles is, is what is here. Uh, this version has in the completeness of, of the Gentiles has come in, and so all Israel shall be saved. That's Israel and Judah, um, which is mentioned, you'll see here later, in what is called uh, the New Covenant. Okay? So, wh what are we talking about here? All right. You've heard that there are ten tribes that are lost. You have scattered them. He scattered them like a farmer takes a handful of seeds and scatters them through the world, through many nations. America and Britain and Scotland, Ireland, those countries were Manasseh and Ephraim. Uh, other brothers were uh, throughout some of the other countries where there are you know, other tribes. But the main ones that come as the head because they were where the blessing was. Many nations came from after that, and that is Ephraim. Okay, and ironically, America is comprised of many nations, many tongues and people. That is what America is. Um, you, I hope you're going to see this, guys, because this is such a blessing when you realize who you are and who the elect is. Okay, so let me just... Um, let me take you back to Genesis. Okay. And this is where um, Jacob takes his son. There's going to be a lot of reading here, guys. So just hang in there with me. And after these events came, that it be that it said to Joseph, See, your father is sick. And he took with him his two sons, Menashe and Ephraim. And Jacob was told, See, your son Yosef is coming to you. And Yisrael strengthened himself and sat upon his bed. And Jacob said to Yosef, El Shaddai appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan, and he blessed me. And he said, See, I am making you bear fruit and shall increase you and make you an assembly of people, a multitude of nations, and give this land to your seed after you an everlasting possession. And now your two sons, Ephraim and Menashe, who were born to you in the land of Mitzrayim before I came to you in Mitzrayim, are mine, as Reuben and Shimon, they are mine. Your offspring, whom you shall bring forth after them, are yours, and let them be called by the name of their brothers in their inheritance. You hear me, folks? <clears throat> so Ephraim and Menashe, when you hear those, it is the rest of the brothers because they got the blessing. Okay? And I, when I came from Paddan, Rachel died beside me in the land of Canaan and on the way when there was but a little distance to go to Ephrath. 
and I buried her on the way to Ephrath, and she, excuse me, that is Bethlehem. And Yisrael saw Yosef's son, and he said, Who are these? And Yosef said to his father, These are my sons who Elohim gave me in this place. And he said, Please bring them to me and let me bless them. Watch this now. And the eyes of Yisrael were dim and with the age, and he was unable to see. And he drew them near to him, and he kissed them, and he embraced them. And Yisrael said to Yosef, I had not thought to see your face, but see, Elohim has shown me your seed. So Yosef brought them from between his knees, and he bowed down with his face to the earth. How's that for honor of his father? And Yosef took them both, Ephraim with his hand toward Yisrael's left hand, and Menashe with his left hand toward Yisrael's right hand, and he brought them near to him. And Yisrael stretched out his right hand and laid it on Ephraim's head, who was the younger. And his left hand on Menashe's head, uh, consciously directing his hands, for Menashe was the firstborn. And he blessed Yosef and said, Elohim, whom, excuse me, the Elohim before whom my fathers Abraham and Yitzhak walked, and the Elohim who has fed me all the long, all my life long to this day. The messenger, listen now, a messenger came. A messenger who has redeemed me from all evil, bless the use, and let my name be called upon them, and let the name of my fathers Abraham and Yitzhak. And let them increase into a multitude in the midst of the earth. And when Yosef saw that his father had laid his right hand on the head of Ephraim, it was evil in his eyes. And he took hold of his father's hand and removed it from the head of Ephraim to the head of Manasseh. And Yosef said to his father, Not so, my father, for this one is the firstborn, and put your right hand on his head. But his father refused and said, I know, my son, I know. He also becomes a people, and he is also great. And yet, his younger brother is greater than he. And here it is. And his seed shall become the fullness, it's the same words, the fullness of the Gentiles. Ephraim, let me say this again. Ephraim becomes the fullness of of the Gentiles. When you're talking about the church age, we're waiting on Ephraim to come in. You hear me? All right. So, uh, now, I want to take you to where the actual diaspora takes place. Okay? And that's Ezekiel 4. Now, after all the idol worship, they were sacrificing babies to Molech. They were doing abominable things. They were doing, they were not keeping the Shemitah. They were doing all these things. Yahuwah decides to, to, to punish them. Now, how does this punishment come? It comes sevenfold. And I want to show you this. This is very important um, mathematics here. And what I got highlighted is uh, in Ezekiel 4, when Yahuwah, and he does these uh, you know, request that seems, you know, just weird. And, and why does he have that? But it's a sign and it is in this parable and it's things for us to uh, analyze and decipher. And here is a nugget I want to give to you because this is important, important confirmation of a, the, the actual table that I was just showing you. All right. So this is where Ezekiel was asked to lay on his sides. And he is to prophesy. And here we'll start in uh, verse 4. And lie on your left side, and you shall put the crookedness of the house of Israel on it. As many days as you lie on it, you shall bear their crookedness. For I myself have laid on you the years of their crookedness, according to the numbers of their days, 390 days. And you shall bear the crookedness of the house of Israel. And when you have completed them, you shall lie again on your right side and bear the crookedness of the house of Yahuwah forty days, a day for a year. I have laid on you a day for a year. <clears throat> now, a day for a year, but uh, there are some things that compound the curse 
as it were. And now I want to take you to Leviticus 26, 18 in the Torah. And it says, after this, if you do not obey me, then I shall punish you seven times more for your sins. Now, folks, what are we talking about here? Now, uh, the captives of the northern tribes started going into captivity around 740 B.C. Around 722, 720 were the last ones were going in to uh, into captivity. There were several sieges. The same thing with the southern kingdom with Nebuchadnezzar. There was more than one more than one siege. Uh, some went into captivity before others. For instance, Daniel went into captivity uh, some eight years before Ezekiel did uh, during another uh, siege. So uh, this is what I want you to see. 722 B.C. 720 is when um, this curse of Ezekiel 4 of 390 days. Now, folks, if you get a calculator and you multiply 390 days times 7, you get 2,730 years. <clears throat> that is how many years they will go into captivity and be scattered among the nations. Pardon me, I had a little itch in the back of my throat. So, 2,730 years. Now, starting at 720 B.C., if you subtract that by the number of years, it brings you to the year 2010, 29, 2010. Now some of you say, well, why does that seem like a significant year? It's right before 2012 when the Mayan calendar thing was happening. Everybody was freaking out about the end of days when it was actually an end of an era, a resetting of a new era. Folks, that was the awakening was beginning. That was when the curse ended. And if you are Ephraim, and you know you are, you know who you are. There are some of you that messaged me. There are many of you, many, many, especially after the broadcast that I did with Zev Porat. We were talking about the one new man and uh, the engrafting, same kind of thing. Many of you messaged me and were uh, wondering if I could look it up and see if you were part of Israel because you feel it. You know it. You, you know why you know it? It's because you're sealed. He sealed you. And you know it in your heart. And it says it in his word. And I'm showing you here. There's a curse that has ended. And he is gathering the nations. He's gathering them. All the tribes. And you know who you are. You are a part of the church. Now, this is not replacement theology. I'm not saying the church is Israel. I'm saying Israel is in the church. That's what I'm saying. Not all of the church is Israel. And besides that, when they come out of Egypt, there was a mixed multitude among them. They went in roughly 70. They came out 11 million. There's something called... Um, It's slipping me again. It is uh, when something is, is multiplied. Uh, <laughs> I hate that. Uh, it, when it, we're talking about the compounding of, of years and people and the multiplying of people. We're, we can be in the 600 million, I believe, as someone told me, is a possible number of those that were, quote, lost, and of course he's not lost to Yahuwah, but to uh, the world, <clears throat> to the enemy. <clears throat> 600 million out of 7 billion people on the planet. So there's a lot of people that we're talking about here, folks. 
the fullness of the Gentiles is Ephraim. The fullness of the Gentiles is Ephraim. Jeremiah 31, and this is a promise from Yahuwah. And he says, see, the days are coming, declares Yahuwah, when I shall make a new covenant of Brit Hadashah with the house of Israel and with the house of Yehuda. These are two houses. This is a new covenant, folks. <clears throat> this is a new covenant. Not like the covenant I made with the fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Mitzrayim. My covenant which they broke, though I was a husband to them. And you know the story of Hosea and then the story of Amos where uh, Israel was a harlot and he divorced her. He declares he will bring her back. He will again make a covenant with her. We're not talking about the people that are in Israel now. You, Judah is back. Judah wasn't under the curse as long as Israel, folks. Um, they are already there. Israel is still coming back. For this is the covenant which I make with the house of Israel. After those days, declares Yahuwah, I shall put my Torah in their inward parts and write it on their hearts. And it shall be, excuse me, and I shall be their Elohim and they shall be my people. This is the time we're in now. That's the time we're in now. Why do you say that? Well, because, like I said, the actual table we're looking at here is just that, folks. The awakening I was telling you about was the end of the curse. The end of the curse right here and it is amazing please stick with me the two years we're talking about here red here which is 2015 and i don't get this but here is uh 2010 in the yellow vertical 2015 same skip pattern you can see there there are three letters in between each letter so it's the same exact skip pattern and they're offset just one column but i noticed here the four letters that they come together, you see how the red letters come together here and stop. Then the yellow letters come together and stop here. The two Hays. But if you had started the Aleph with Adam, which is man, you have a tent. Aleph, Hay, Laman, Hay is a tent in the Aretz, a tent in the land. You hear me what I'm saying? There's a tent in the land. That's tabernacles. That's what Peter wanted to do at the Mount of Transfiguration because he thought the kingdom was here. He wanted the tabernacle. And here we have the end of the curse with these two years coming together with the tent of in the land. Okay? Uh, we have a harlot here. Harlot is also down here in these black letters. The days of Noah starting here and going here. We also have Netzerim, or the Christian, the, the Natsri, or the Nazarene. This is the same word, Natsri. Uh, we have the United States, the uh, Brit, uh, uh, Brit Hadashah, excuse me. So the Brit, not the New Covenant, the Covenant people, which is the Brit, uh, the uh, Zod of Brit. Uh, crossing over right here, when there's a hay inside of Yahuwah, actually those letters undo who are crossing over the end of the curse uh, we also have the elect the elect is right there connecting with uh, in the blue here and vertical and horizontal here the days of Noah uh, behold the days are coming uh, in the white, stopping with the Tav right here on these two verses that we're going to read here. And this is important verses that are just amazing confirmations. But that's the exiles right here. Um, and actually, there's a hay that's supposed to be there too from that. I don't know how that got completely highlighted, but it goes there. It's uh, the Hagalot, 
the exiles there. Uh, stopping on these two verses, the only two verses that I thought were significant. There's some snippets from like Zechariah here, uh, which is, um, Behold, I'm going to make um, Jerusalem a burdensome stone and uh, a cup of trembling. Uh, uh, behold, the days are coming as well of here. Hanei yamin bayim, off to the right. So we got that twice. Behold, the days are coming. Behold, the days are coming, folks. Um, yeah. So let's read the, from the very top verse that I have here at the top. Here, which is uh, Vakra uh, 2231. 2231. And the reason why they were scattered, folks, remember, he said, and, and they got punished seven times over, is they wouldn't keep his commandments. He wouldn't do what he wanted him to do and live right. So, what does he say here? At the end of the, of the curse, he's reminding the people. He's reminding us. Therefore shall ye keep my commandments and do them. I am Yahuwah. And neither shall ye profane my holy name, but I will be hallowed among the children of Israel. I am Yahuwah, which hallows you, that I brought you out of the land of Egypt, to be your Elohim. I am Adonai. The next verse we're going to see right here, and this is where they, the hay is in that, and that is Joshua 9, 15. Thank you guys for hanging in there. And Joshua made a peace with them, and he made a covenant with them. That's you. Yahshua. Yahshua made peace with them and made a covenant with them and let them live. And the princes of the congregation swore unto them. And then here, which is Jeremiah. I love Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter. All right, starting with, let's start with verse 6. In his days, Yehuda shall be saved, and Yisrael, two different, two different houses, shall dwell safely. And in this, his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord, our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days come, said Yehuda, that they shall no more say that Adonai liveth, which brought them up the children of Israel out of the land of Mitzrayim, but Adonai liveth which brought them up, which led the seed. Listen, this is different than the first exodus. This is another exodus. This is the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country. You live in North America and all the countries where I have driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. For the land is full of adulterers. Excuse me. Mine heart within me is broken because of the prophets. And all my bones shake. And I am like a drunken man. And like a man whom wine hath overcome. Because of the Adonai. Which because of the words of his holiness. For the land is full of adulterers. And because of swearing the land mourneth. You hear what I'm saying folks. This land is perverted and sick and the pleasant places in the wilderness are dried up and the course is evil and their force is not right for both prophet and priest are profane yea in my house i have found their wickedness saith yahoo are you you following the osteens and uh those kind of churches the oprah winfrey type churches folks that's what we got now here in this country. Therefore, 
their ways shall be unto them as a slippery ways in the darkness, and they shall be driven on and fall therein, for I will bring evil upon them, <clears throat> even the year of their visitation, saith the Yahuwah, the Adonai, excuse me. <clears throat> and I have seen the folly of the prophets of Samaria, and they have prophesied in Baal. Lord, this is the actual word Lord <clears throat> in Hebrew. And cause my people Israel to err. And I've also seen in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. They commit adultery and they walk in lies. And they strengthen also the hands of evildoers. That none do return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom. And the inhabitants therefore as Gomorrah. Therefore thus saith Yahuwah. Excuse me. Therefore thus saith Adonai of hosts. Concerning the prophets, behold, I will feed them wormwood and make them drink the waters of gall. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness grown forth into all the land. This next verse. Excuse me. Here we go. Thus saith Yahuwah of hosts, hearken on unto the words of the prophets, and prophesied unto you in vain. Speak a vision in their own heart, and out of their mouth of, and not out of the mouth of Yahuwah. They say still unto them that despise me, the Lord has said, ye shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walketh after their own imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. This is America. No evil gonna come upon you. Who has stood in the counsel of Yahuwah and hath perceived and heard his word? Who hath marked his word and heard it? A whole the whirlwind of Yahuwah has gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. The anger of Yahuwah shall not return until he has executed, until he hath performed the thoughts of his hearts in the latter days. Achret Yamim, that is the time you're in now. In the latter days, ye shall consider it perfectly. Folks, I want you to consider what I'm saying to you. Look around. Look around in the world. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, they would have turned them from their evil way and from their evil doing. I am an Elohim and Han, saith the Adonai, and not an Elohim far off. He is here right now, ready. Jeremiah 32, 20, excuse me, 39 is where we're going. And I'm going to close it out here, folks, because we are already at 33 minutes. And I want to thank those that are subscribing to the channel and supporting this ministry. Uh, I, can't, I can't go on without you. Who are sending those to help um, this ministry keep going? Um, it is a tough burden. To bear it is uh, and I try to get to as many as many of your questions and your comments as I can guys and I'm glad I got Dara here helping uh, she is an amazing research partner um, and I'm thankful you for you for, for sending her my way uh, 3229 back it up Behold, I will gather them out of all the countries in here. The, we're talking about the end of the curse, folks. This hasn't happened yet. 1948, Judah came back. Behold, I will gather them out of all the countries where I have driven them in my anger and in my fury. He didn't throw them away forever. He didn't throw us away forever. And in great wrath... And I will bring them again unto this place, and I will cause them to dwell safely, and they shall be my people, and I will be their Elohim. And I will give them one heart and one way. One way, folks. There's not more than one way to Yahuwah. There's only one way. I will give them one heart and one way, and they may fear me forever for the good of them. 
and for their children after them. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them to do, excuse me, that I will not turn away from them to do them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts and that they shall not depart from me. And yea, I will rejoice over them to do good. And I will plant them in this land assuredly with my whole heart and my whole soul. And that is an amazing statement from our Creator. For thus saith Yahuwah, as I live, as, excuse me, as thus saith Yahuwah, like as I have brought you all this great evil upon this people, so will I bring upon them all the good that I have promised them. And there you go. Mm. And men shall buy fields for money and subscribe evidence and seal them and take witnesses in the land of Benjamin and in the presence in the places about Jerusalem and the cities of Judah and the cities of the mountains. Uh, wow, that is awesome. And I'm so thankful for the revelation you have given me, Father, that I can share this with your people. Folks, please uh, take time to share this video. And there's more coming as well. Uh, I am watching what's going on in uh, in the Orthodox community, and as far as watching prophecy, as well. Also watch, I also watch Muslims too, um, in, in some of their prophecies because it's relevant. It's all tied together. And one of these things that struck me is the fact that they're looking at Nibiru and Wormwood. Um, so it's based on prophecy from Balaam here, like you see. Uh, here in the end of days, what will happen to your people, the star, uh, and the Zohar prophecy about the star that comes, and uh, it's a witness of the Messiah coming. So uh, those things that I'm tracking right now and looking over, I did find a new table today called the Nibiru event, and it only appears, it only appears one time. Where is it? At? Right here. Nibiru event. It's a lot of letters, and it only appears one time encoded in the Bible at a skip of 18500. So I'm just now looking at that. This is nothing here that you see on the far right. That's just markers of interesting verses that I'm going to go back and look at. Um, but you got, behold, the days are coming. The word um, Nibiru event. Shalom. Shalom, and you who will bless you. And um, have no fear. You have joy. And look up, your redemption is drawing near, folks.